Welcome back to day 88. Uh, from this point on, for the next several videos, I will be focusing almost primarily on building. Um, not that I haven't been building in the other episodes, but uh, the uh, little... You can see here I've uh, set up a automated dock and launch system with a button. Ding. Turn the power on, turn the power off, turn the power off, turn the power off so that I can uh, move my uh, little cart easily and not have to pick it up every single time. So yay, look it works, see? Jump in, and press button. Okay, anyways, back to what I was saying. Uh, the little structure I was digging, di blah, 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 digging, building, whatever out here, that was, you know, I dug in the water, I set up the walls, and here we are now. And so, from this point on, I'll be building specifically on this structure, and it will take quite a while. Um, as of this moment, uh, right when I'm starting to record these narratives, I have 104 gigabytes of video <laughs> that I've recorded, and it hurts me to say that I'm still a long ways away from finished. So, I'm going to go ahead and uh, record as much as I can, get as much as I can done, and uh, we'll just barrel through this progress, and uh, we'll see what happens. And today, instead of focusing on more from my must-play RPG list, I was uh, instead thinking that I'm going to do a, another uh, game topic, and I would like to cover... Um, instead of my uh, must-play RPGs, I would just like to get into RPGs in general that I've played. Specifically, I want to start with the first true RPGs I got into, which were the Final Fantasy series. Um, like I said, my very first before was Shadowrun and Super Mario RPG. At the time, I didn't realized these were, except for the fact that Super Mario RPG said it, I didn't know what an RPG was. And my only knowledge of RPG was tabletop, uh, like Dungeons and Dragons. I had no experience with, you know, video game based RPGs. So in 1997, for Christmas, I uh, got myself a Sony PlayStation and a copy of Final Fantasy VII. Which was great, except for my Sony PlayStation was damaged and I had to go get another one because I got it, went home, unpacked it, plugged it in, there was no sound. None at all. Video worked great, but the sound was bugged. I'm going to fix that water someday. Whatever. So, it was uh, an unfortunate circumstance. But uh, I, needless to say, I was able to get it done and... Um, but I did play the first, like, five or six hours of the game with no sound. Um, I had experienced Final Fantasy VII prior to purchasing it at a friend of mine's. Um, uh, a guy I went to, uh, through, met in fifth grade, went through sixth grade, didn't go to the same seventh and eighth because I changed schools, and then met again in high school. But, uh, I don't even think that all falls within the same timeline. But, <laughs> needless to say, we were best friends at the time. And uh, I still try to keep in contact him contacting now and then, but we don't talk extensively. Uh, but anyways, he and his but his other buddy that he knew that lived in the neighborhood, I was like two neighborhoods away. Uh, we just met at school. And um, he was a couple years behind us, his other buddy. And he's uh, his buddy had a Sony PlayStation, and he had a uh, Final Fantasy VII for it. And they played it. I had not experienced it yet at this point. When I joined up with them and they were playing, they were already at... I believe I met them somewhere I, around when they get to Juno the first time. was when I uh, encountered it with, uh, with them. And I uh, watched them play uh, through to the Gold Saucer. And then it was around Christmas time and I had to have my own. So I... Uh, I went and got me, uh, with my, uh, 
Christmas money from my grandparents. I bought a Sony PlayStation and Final Fantasy 7 and had to play. I need that block. Yes. So, anyway, everyone has played Final Fantasy 7. If you haven't, you should just go shoot yourself because you've like wasted years of your life. <laughs> Maybe not that extreme, but there are things you you definitely should have played it at this point in time. Um, I'm not going to say it's definitely a must play, but it is. There's a reason Final Fantasy 7 is, you know, the fanboy dream of Final Fantasy games. It's, you know, the most coveted, highly respected, highly controversial, and I don't mean controversial as in the game was controversial, I mean as in its reputation is controversial, controversial, or whatever, you know what I'm saying. And it's... Let's just get past this right now. The truth of the matter is, Final Fantasy VII sucks. In an RPG aspect, it sucks. Because RPGs are defined by story. And at the heart of it, Final Fantasy VII has a really shitty, boring-ass story. It's so extremely cliched, it's unreal. And, you know, don't get me wrong, it was an, an exhilarating experience to play this game. But what made Final Fantasy VII awesome wasn't its story, it was its gameplay. And I'll be the first to admit, it, it just had the best gameplay of any Final Fantasy that has, up to, in my opinion, up till now ever existed. I've played, you know, like I said, through 4 till 12. I haven't played 13. And I, uh, messed up. And so I can't really comment on those, but it was such a profound system of gameplay, especially the Materia system. I don't think I've ever loved a, uh, a magic system in a game quite the way I loved it in Final Fantasy VII. The, uh, the Materia system was so perfectly strategized between its ability to not only influence your stats a little, but also you know, define how your characters play, whether you wanted to be, you know, a powerhouse or a, a tank type or, you know, focus more on magic or focus on healing or, you know, whatever it was that you were getting your characters to do, the material sort of lets you customize characters for a game whose characters were more or less generalized as oops, being more or less all the same. And, um, I say that because come the end of the game, when you get to the end of Final Fantasy VII, if you spend the time and level every character, with the exception of um, some of the limit breaks, especially Omni Slash, that was just like horribly, horribly broken in comparison to some others, any job, any character that had the the multi-hit um, weapons, the multi-hit weapons, uh, the multi-hit um, limit breaks was broken and they were broken pretty badly uh, because it was just like they so have like um, Vincent's character had you know and, and Yuffie had one and they're just these single hits moves that did you know you max out the 9999 damage and that was all they did, but then you had, you know, Cloud and Tifa and, um, I believe Barrett had a multi-hit, I'm not, I can't remember for certain. But, you know, they would do, you know, these several hits and they could, you know, do tens of, twenty to thirty, forty thousand damage in one round, in one attack. And so it became a little unbalanced. But overall, strength-wise and stat-wise, the characters were more or less the same. You know, their, their core stats weren't too much didn't have too much deviation between each other. So it was really the materia that allowed you to shape what character did what and how they were, how they functioned in battle. And what was interesting was the actual tactical side of battle when you could, like, some battles were, you know, made and lost depending on your 
choices depending on what material you chose to use because some of them just like some mobs responded a certain way to certain types of attacks or you had um, uh, I don't know, it's just you know skill sets that work certain ways or maybe you forgot to equip your restore materia <laughs> you know stuff like that and it was just it went a real extra mile to make the game really interesting the way it functioned around it. Not only did they make Materia just the core aspect of how the battle system works, but they actually brought it into the story itself. So that Materia took on a, a story element in the game and became more than just the magic system. It became really what the whole game was about. And at the core of Final Fantasy VII, the story really is about Materia. And it's something that I think a lot of people don't realize. I mean, because the black materia, the holy materia, the life flow, it all is one thing in Final Fantasy VII. It all comes from itself. And it's, you know, a continual cycle. Like, materia is made by a, you know, condensing of life force, uh, the life force spirit, was it, was it called life force? I don't remember, I haven't played in so long, I forget, how bad is that? I think it was called life force, and, or, whatever, the, the green shit flew into the ground. <laughs> and, uh, so, it was all related, it was all one thing, and I get the, the, the Buddhist spiritual, uh, you know, everything is part of the same thing, energy movement, sort of methodology, science, uh, science uh, philosophy, to how the game functions, and then the way that the initial starting conflict with uh, Shinra and their Mako reactors, and how they're essentially sucking out the life of the, inter the, of the planet, uh, and, you know, breaking the whole energy should not be created to destroy cycle and turn it into something more you know devious and unfortunate and then it explodes when they introduce the Sephiroth character which is while interesting he's really a weak villain as far as story it's like his his I guess you can attribute his personality weakness to the fact that he has Mako exposure and the Genova cells in him like, it's one of the things that always made me sort of forgive Final, uh, Cloud's really weak character was that his... He's supposed to be, you know, mentally damaged is the whole point. He's, he's... I mean, hell, he's, hell, he's practically retarded. <laughs> but, I mean, that's really the best way to look at it. He's, he's retarded. And, I mean, from all the years... I say years... It was, it was about two years, probably, that he spent in a Mako reactor... You know, and it's or in the tube, anyways, in Nibelheim, Nibel, whatever, Nibel, Nibelheim, yeah. And it was just, you know, because it was just one of those odd, this doesn't make any sense kind of stories. That, like, why are these characters the way they are? Like, I understood uh, Barrett's motivation, and I understood Tifa's motivation, and even Sid and Yuffie, and they all. It all fit together and as a story, and I got it. You know, they, they worked. But Cloud didn't fit, and Sephiroth didn't fit. They were both very shallow, very empty, boring characters. I mean, they were fun to play because they were badasses, but they weren't, in, they weren't really interesting. They were just fun because they were awesome. You know? Like, their, 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 their personas were just weak and... I would never want to associate with someone who had that kind of character because you just seem you're the emo in the room it's like don't feed the emo because <laughs> this dude is just a buzzkill man he's a downer and i i don't like him <laughs> honestly but uh dude wielded a big giant sword and that and that's that's kind of awesome so you just have to get into that a little and that's sort of what made the difference, I think, was the big giant sword. I don't know, maybe, maybe that says something about gamers and our uh, 
our association with phallic symbols. Maybe we shouldn't read into that. That's why we really love Clown, because he had a big giant sword. <laughs> That's awkward. Um, I don't want to see. I don't want to see Freud over that one later. Uh, <laughs> but uh, so, like I said, it's 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 a neat story, but it's not a great story. I think the problem with Final Fantasy VII, as far as it, the plot, in my opinion, really comes down to they tried to do too much. And they try to put, there's too many overlaying plots that it all just sort of gets lost and isn't properly supported and gets jumbled and it doesn't work for me. Like, it's just not what you want. Um, from, or, I mean, don't get me wrong, it's still good. I don't want to make a game think I didn't enjoy the game. It's, you know, outside of Final Fantasy XI, I have more hours playing Seven than any other Final Fantasy that I've ever played. It was really, really entertaining. It just wasn't as great as it's hailed to be, in my opinion. Like, everyone seems to have this, or everyone, every diehard Final Fantasy fanboy has this image of Final Seven as like the holy grail of RPGs, and it's not, really. There's a lot of games that are a lot better written, have much better stories, better character development, and even have better, you know, gameplay. And I say that with, you know, a grain of salt, because, like I said, the material system is what made Final Fantasy VII for me. If it hadn't been for that, I probably wouldn't have enjoyed it quite as much. Other than the fact that it was just my first awesome RPG adventure on the PlayStation. So... It was, it was a great little game. Uh, I played the shit out of it. I even... I played it until I had max stats, which required using the Devour ability on specific mobs. It would turn them into the little item boost item, or stat boost in items. And uh, you can only get the four. It was like the strength, the defense, uh, the magic and the magic defense, or spirit, whatever the hell it was called. Those are like the only ones you could get, or there was, might have been one more, like speed or something. And I literally maxed out all my stats I played that long. I had uh, full sets of Master Materia, three full sets of Master Materia, all maxed. Um, I mean, I just, I played the shit out of that game. Uh, you know, my, my count on the clock which goes to 99 hours, 59 minutes, and 59 seconds, was capped, and I, I'm assuming I played for at least 300 hours after that. So, quite a while. Uh, a lot of hours put into it. A lot of hours put into it. Uh, but it was like, it was really my first major story-driven RPG. And it was the first real experience I had with the genre. And it'll always be, it's still one of my favorites, and I still want to see it remade. Just because I want to play that shitty-ass cheesy story with better graphics. I know that's kind of shallow and empty of me, but I want it. Um, it just for nostalgia factor. It probably won't be as good as I remember, but I want it for the nostalgia factor. And I, I can't get around how much I want it for the nostalgia factor. And I still think SE could make a lot of money if they were to remake it and appease the fanboys that want it. Um, I'm sure they're desperately afraid, afraid they'd fuck it up, which is why they haven't done it. Because if you do fuck it up, no, the fanboys would never forgive you. You would just be fucked for life. And SE, it would, it would just destroy their already pathetic standing. Because if you didn't know, they've, they, they're just like losing money horribly. I mean, if they didn't own Eidos and a few other industries that aren't directly related to them, they would probably be on a sinking ship. Because they are not making money the way they sh used to be. Uh, for the past decade or so, they've been on a steady decline. But it looks like that'll be it for Final Fantasy VII, because I am now about to be out of time on this video. So, I'm going to go ahead and say goodbye here, and we will come back to this real quick with the next episode. So, stay tuned, and I'll see you then. And, uh, goodbye.